Paul, J.P. Morgan's Marta Kalanovich will join us in just moments. Plus, Amazon hitting another all-time high today. But if you miss the move, there are two other stocks that are much cheaper and could actually be a better way to play the online giant's rally. And later, famed short seller Bill Fleckenstein says, get this, this is an unshortable market. So how is he making money right now? He'll tell us. But first, we start off with another stunning day for stocks. Dow up 100 points. The S&P less than a percent away from a record high, while the Nasdaq made a new record for the second straight day. The question for tonight is clear. Are there still stocks or sectors you can still buy right now? Hey, Mel, I think there's still some stocks for sure. About September 13th, 14th, the headline came across before we went on our air. Anadarko Petroleum to buy Gulf of Mexico properties from Freeport McMoran. Recall saying on that show, they're going to price the secondary to buy, this, to buy that, those assets. You buy Anadarko Petroleum off that secondary. Look what the stock has done since then. I think they priced it mid-55, 55, 55 and a half. Stock is 61 now. What do you do? You stay with a name like that. Allergan, we've talked about for quite some time. Are there sectors? You know, sector specific, it's hard to say. I do think biotech continues higher from here. Meg's going to be on later to talk about that. But specific names, general names, still give you opportunity. Absolutely. Hey, I think I'll go sectors. I'll make it easy. I'll be consistent. Utilities. Staples haven't really performed. I think people are worried about their valuation. Yeah. Tim's actually questioned that as well. So I think you go materials, energy, utilities, still buy. I tell you, you know, if you look at where the market is right now, we're exactly where we've been at a handful of moments. Um, but there is a, a number of sectors, I think, including financials, even financials, even though the regulatory bullseye continues to be out there, including the rails, including, so the transports, I think the FedEx numbers, I've been saying this over the last couple of days, gives you ammunition. Everything everyone is telling you is there is reflation in the air. If, set, if yesterday's Bank of Japan, maybe more important than the Fed, means you have this inflection point with global interest rates, um, you have an opportunity for things where pricing power means they go higher. Inflation isn't bad for everybody. It's very good. It's very good for ag. It's very good for commodities. Emerging markets are now uh, at 15-month highs. They're outperforming the S&P by 14% in the last three months, so uh, six months. So you've got a case here where you can make strong arguments for things that weren't you know, part of the uh, you know, last year's trade, and that actually valuation-wise look interesting now. Here's the deal. I, look, there are absolutely sectors you can step in and buy. I agree with the utilities. I agree with these yieldy names that people are going to gravitate towards, but I'd wait. I, I'm telling you, people wait at home, what? wait, because you do not chase trades like this, especially after How is it a chase? Like utilities that. were down you, no, 8%. Not, forget, I'm not talking about utilities in general. I'm saying the market in general you don't chase. So I look at it and say, Utilities, perfect example. If the market comes in, I believe that the utilities will sell off as well, just as a risk-off scenario. So, is the so I say to you, you will find there is, better times to step in. And there's buy. nothing to buy at this moment. Look, are there things to buy? Biotech. I still love biotech. Okay. I'm constructive on it, so I'm, I'm on a pullback. I'm going to be stepping in and buying biotech. I said to you, look at the banks. The way the banks held in here uh, is incredible to me, especially in the face of a rate. Banks are probably structured, you know, I, I think they're probably neutral for the near term, but you can't be short the banks. You cannot be short the banks, so you have to position yourself and trade them from the, the long market, side on a pullback. If the market sells off, the banks will sell off. No we'll doubt. leave the market lower. But what so do you do? You, but you, you can't buy them here, too, because they've underperformed. Let me tell you on the rally up, they've but underperformed. The you're going to sell off, Steve. I'm asking you a question. I think it's because er, uh, the whole, we talked about this last night, the earnings growth is not there. Global growth is not there. Usually when you raise rates, you raise it in the face of high. Higher inflation, higher global growth. We have neither. The spread between the two and ten is usually right. 350 basis points. We don't even have half of that. But we haven't right had now. we haven't had that for two years. Doesn't matter. So, but, I mean, but, that, but my, that's what you asked me why the market would sell and off. I, that's fair. But my point would be then, if the market's going to sell off, isn't it going to be selling off because rates are moving higher and utilities and some of the things that you like, yeah. I think, are under the biggest gonna pressure. Gonna be cut. Actually, no, no. But on a relative basis, where are people getting yield? So they will sell off. They will sell off less than the overall market. On a, on a are we basis. all positioning based on the assumption that the markets are going to sell off? Sideways. Oh, Sideways. Well, I think I we're mean, all lower. positioning that, based on the fact the market's going to grind higher. That's been a recipe for disaster mm. for, yeah. for, for nine months. The, the, the fact of the matter is there are things that have been very oversold. There, you're actually getting uh, some earnings power, some pricing power in a handful of sectors. You have a case where valuations, if people were scared to death two weeks ago when the Fed started talking and, and interest rates were starting to move higher, people said suddenly valuations for the S&P make no sense. You have to be going to sectors that actually you do have some earnings power. Japanese equities, the reason I like them is because they trade 20% cheap to the S&P. I don't think that currency is going to weaken that what's much. A, that's, what you tr that, that's what you need to be doing in What's a fair valuation market? on the S&P? Fair valuation. I mean, you think you're looking at next year's earnings. You say at, 17 at times next year. Rate, $130. Let's assume the best case scenario, 2200 
right? 2,200. Stocks get tired. They're getting tired. They're tired at 2,180. But you don't know. When we saw this. You, you don't know where earnings out. are going. And we've it, had. It doesn't had, matter. It's, I, I, I get the, it, Tim. The bar is incredibly low. I, I guess my point is that. Um, to, earnings to have been ratcheted down over the past couple of weeks. But to know where the S&P should be priced at when things are at zero, we know the Fed wants to begin to normalize, but that actually we're in this very well-documented earnings recession that actually the bar is so low, it won't take much for actually earnings to begin to build upon a very low base. You mentioned stock specific as opposed to sector. Can I give you another because, crazy stock yes. specific? Go crazy. You, you, you're not even going to believe it. I'm about to say this. Because we laughed at this guy when, when the, the Einhorn headline, or not the Einhorn, the Ackman headline came out about Chipotle Mexican you Grill. Chipotle here. Re recall that, and the yes. stock went up to $440. We said you got to fade it. it. Actually traded back down to about 390 or so. But look at the performance today, and look at where it held in relation to the low it made in January. For a trade now, I think CMG is giving you an opportunity. Risk reward sets up well. The view on the markets, though, Guy, because you've been out for the past couple of days, and we had a Fed decision. Do I look darker to you? No. no. It's, that's almost tough to do. You look just, younger, Guy. You look younger. Yeah, I don't know about that either. Sorry. Glad anyway, you're back, though, I digress. Nonetheless. Continue. Yes, your view on the market overall. My view's been wrong now for quite some time. I mean, yeah. I thought that r lower rates would mean the market would sell off at a certain point. The Fed continues to talk hawkish, but actions speak louder than words. They're clearly not doing anything in the foreseeable future. Their credibility, in my opinion, is shot, but it doesn't matter. What does it mean? It means the market can continue to grind higher. It doesn't mean I have to like it. It doesn't mean I have to believe it. But there's an old saying in the world, would you rather be right or you'd rather make money? And most people would choose the latter. All right, let's stick to stocks here. A Chinese newspaper dubbed our next guest half man, half God, for his ability to call the market. Not making a joke, it's true. And for good reason. Take a listen to what J.P. Morgan's Marco Kalanovic said on Fast Money earlier this month. We expect definitely increase in volatility in September, uh, uh, more, more likely than not sell-off as well. Um, and, and again, it would be triggered by higher volatility, mm -hmm. delevering from various uh, uh, systematic strategies, and some of these option effects that then go in reverse. Now, if you listened to Marco, you would have been in front of that move and could have made a lot of money. Over the next week, the S&P pulled back to the tune of 3%. Marco joins us again in a CNBC exclusive. Marco, it's always good to see you. What should we say, Mr. God? Mr. Half-God, <laughs> Half-Man. Sorry, Mr. Half-God. Yeah. <laughs> Not God more yet. Impressive, actually. Um, now what, Marco? We have the Fed decision out of the way, and you actually say some of these... These strategies, systemic strategies like CTAs, risk parities, mm -hmm. they've delevered? Yes, it's tomorrow is going to be two weeks from the from the first uh, uh, sort of pullback. I mean, the, the, the market declines. So typically they delever within that time period, probably two thirds to three quarters. Um, you know, so there could be some a little bit more trickling, but it's largely out of the way, you know, which which means that, um, you know, unlikely we'll have a, a crash, uh, definitely not from those guys. And, and what you mentioned, uh, central banks, uh, you know, came out, uh, you know, pre pretty dovish overall. BOJ is behind us. Fed is behind us. You know, on the Fed side, so we're sort of, you know, there's going to be no news basically pretty much until until December. We have ECB end of uh, end of October, but I would say in the next, let's say, four to six weeks, um, all of these sort of catalysts we were fearing for, uh, uh, we were fearful of, are now behind us. You know, um, so uh, so we could we could see some some bounce back, and and, and certainly risk uh, is not as high as it was uh, when I was here two weeks ago. Yeah? What kind of bounce back are you talking about? And, and it, yeah. the elections don't mm -hmm. play any role in your in your so, view. So 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 they do a bit, you know, and and I can address that. But first, in terms of a bounce back, and 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 I think. Um, I agree sort of uh, what pretty much most of you are saying, you know, equities are expensive, you know, like, so I wouldn't broadly, as a broad market, as an S&P, I wouldn't hope for anything spectacular, you know, because you have, you know, pockets of, of you know, yield dependent stuff, which is rich, you know, you have a, a momentum growth stuff, which is rich, you have some segments like uh, energy materials, international stocks, which are cheaper, you know, so it's S&P is a mixed bag of things. So I don't think you'll have like, basically market shooting up one way, but you could have some bounce back in the stuff that, that sold either last two weeks more than it should have. Uh, you could have bounce back in things that are cheap to start with, you know, and again, those would be uh, sort of more stuff like energy materials, multinationals, emerging market stocks, financials even to some extent, you know, like so, so I'd be sort of selective where to pick that bounce back rather than sort of telling you S&P is gonna go up like, you know, three or 5%, you mm -hmm. know, and. Yeah. But, but Marco, you know, Eric Rosengren threw the market on its ear two weeks ago, and this is the same guy that dissented. The same dynamic is at work. So these same high frequency guys mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the quant guys and the risk parity guys, shouldn't they be on the, the edge of their buttons ready to press again? So, you know, so, so volatility 
ticked up uh, basically in uh, you know t two weeks ago, right? Like, and, and they reacted, you know. So they started selling. They took down their equity exposure, uh, you know, roughly uh, by by a half um, uh, from the peak value, you know. So 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 now you would need to have another spike in volatility, or you would need to have a market Don't momentum exist. breaking negative which wouldn't happen until 2050 you know like so 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 you know if you know if you're tomorrow down at 2050 yes then the answer is they will press the sell button again but i don't see what's going to get us there like uh, in the next few weeks well you look at the positioning you know hedge funds have basically covered their shorts mm -hmm. they are more they are longer than ever right they've lost control of the market the momentum guys mm -hmm. right or the let's say the quant guys in the in the um uh, the passives have really had, you know, their their reign on this market. Hedge fund chase into year end. If this market continues to grind higher, could be very very substantial in your opinion. So so I mean, and th that's where sort of you know election come into play, and perhaps uh, the, you know the, obviously December Fed comes into play. You know, so so I would say if you look at the equity long short hedge funds, their equity exposure, if you measure it by correlation to market or by beta to market, is not that high. Right. You know, and I mentioned that last time. Um, uh, you know, back a year ago, their exposure was very high, so they pile on a, you know alongside machine. Right now, like they already were actually to start with in, in, in August, they're not that long. You know, so so they could definitely increase their exposure. So you could see some uh, sort of rally into year end. Now, elections are here in between uh, right now and the year end. Um, and my take on that is that there's going to be more volatility related to elections. But ultimately, I don't think elections derail equity uh, direction, uh, you know, be it fundamental or technical one. And, and the reason is, you know, I think sort of either options um, uh, uh, sort of win, uh, win in November. There are pros and cons. There are different offsetting things. You know, on one side, you have a sort of a tr uh, trade issues. On the other hand, you have a corporate uh, uh, capital gains tax, income tax, uh, tax cuts. You have some of the structural tax uh, imbalances that, you know, so, so very balanced, you know, so I would sort of, I, I would, I would advise clients not to panic about elections, no matter what the outcome is, it could be sort of similar to Brexit, you know, you have a lot of fear be ahead, right. you know, and then turns out to be sort of nothing. Yeah. Marco, good to see you. Thanks for Thank coming you. by. I always appreciate it. Marco Colano with JP Morgan. Uh, what do you make of Marco's assessment well, of sectors? To be in well, I you know I think energy. There are places in energy that I think look interesting. I mean, Marco talks about some of it being expensive. I happen to agree, but stock specific. You know, we started the show with an Anadarko Petroleum. The refiners had a big move to the upside. They've given a little back. Maybe you have opportunities there. I will say this though. I agree with the whole election thing, but the debate is a bit of a wild card. I think if Mr. Trump acquits himself in any half decent form on Monday, you could see futures that night sort of sell off to the tune of 15 to 20 S and P handles. Yeah, I, I don't know about the election, but I do believe, first of all, I, whoever wins the debate on Monday night is going to be the next president of the United States. It's as simple as that. Really? I hate to, I hate to make, oversimplify it, but that's the way it is. Uh, materials, I think, are still a buy. Energy is still a buy. I do believe utilities are still a buy. All right. Up next, the three stocks hitting fresh all-time highs today. And they could be telling the real story, and the consumer will give you the names. Plus, have you noticed that Twitter's been moving lower in the after-hour session, burning up the ticker at the bottom of your TV? That's because RBC just downgraded the stock moments ago, and that analyst will join us at the bottom of the hour. And later, has the Fed lost control? Famed short seller Bill Fleckenstein certainly thinks so, and he's got some strong words for Janet Yellen. He'll tell us how he's playing the market right now with Bass Money Return.